Good afternoon, dear learners. I welcome you to the class of Data Entry Operations Secondary Course. Today we are going to talk about Computer Fundamentals. So let us have a look at what all we are going to talk about today. Firstly, we are going to talk about working of a computer, then components of a computer, then we are going to talk about some input devices, the central processing unit, output devices, memory unit, memory accessing modes and the classifications of computer. So, if we talk about working of a computer, so before talking about working of a computer, let us talk about what is a computer. So, what do you understand by the term computer? So, we say computer is a machine which takes some input, do the processing and gives you the output. Now, when we say computer is a machine, we must also know what is a machine. So, machine is, you know, anything which simplifies human work, which makes our life easy, which makes our life comfortable is called a machine. So, even a simple knife or a simple scissor is also a machine because it helps you to reduce your work or to do your work smartly. So, a computer is a machine which takes input from the user, does the, performs the processing on it and gives you the desired output. That is the basic uh, definition of a computer. Now let us understand the working of a computer. So if we talk about working of a computer again we will see you can see it on the diagram that there is an input device then there is some there is a CPU and then the output. Now all the processing which is done is done by the CPU. Now the CPU further consists of the control unit, arithmetical and logical unit and the memory unit. So, let us talk about the working of a computer in detail. So, the working of a computer can be broadly categorized into four functions. First function is to receive an input. Second function is to process information. Third is to store information. And fourth is to produce output. So, uh, now uh, giving the input is done by the input devices. And then the processing part is performed by CPU and the displaying the output again back to the user is done by the output devices. So basically the computer has four major components. First input device, second central processing unit which is also known as the CPU, third is the memory, fourth is the output devices. Let us talk about input devices in detail. Now what, what are input devices? Suppose you know, if we talk about humans, if you compare yourself with the computer, then if you're talking to somebody, suppose your mother gives you an instruction that you get up and, you know, do some task or get ready for school or do anything, then you are taking that input from, from your ears, right? Like you are hearing what your mother is saying through your ears. So you're taking that input from the ears. Similarly, input devices, you know, we give some instructions to the computer and they hear that, uh, you know, they take that instruction from input devices. So basically an input device is used to get data or instruction from the user. Now this data is then passed on to the CPU for processing so as to produce the desired output. Now if your mother tells you to get up and give her a glass of water, then what will you do? You will first listen. That voice will once come into your ear, then that will be sent to your brain, right? Then your brain will process, you will understand what, what you have heard and then perform accordingly, right? So if she have told you to get up and give her a glass of water, you are going to hear that from your ears, that, that thing will get processed in your brain and then you will perform the consequent output, right? You are going to get up, go to the kitchen, get get a glass of water and give it to her. Similarly, the data which is passed, you know, which is, uh, which you, which the computer gets from the input device is passed on the CPU for processing and then the CPU gives the desired output. So, let us talk about some of the input devices. So, first the commonly used input device is keyboard. So, this is what a traditional keyboard looks like. Uh, you can just have a look at it. This is a keyboard. So, keyboard is the most common and most popular input device which helps to input data to the computer. The layout of the keyboard is like that of a traditional typewriter. 
if you have seen a typewriter which were used in earlier days you can you know uh, very uh, you can make very uh, similar you can find out the similarities that the keyboard you know the layout of a keyboard is just like that of a typewriter but there are some additional keys provided uh, in the keyboard as compared to the typewriter and these these keys perform some additional functions let us talk about the next input device which is a mouse so um this is what a traditional mouse looks like you you can you know have some relevance to the real life mouse also by seeing this picture so you can compare the cable with the tail and the uh, section which you hold in your hand with the body of the mouse so this is what a mouse looks like so a mouse is basically a pointing device that controls the movement of the cursor or the pointer on a display screen so as you move the mouse the pointer on the display screen moves in the same direction so this is how you hold the mouse it is like the mouse is there and you gently you know just hold it and whenever you move the mouse you move the pointer on the display it's uh, when you you know move the mouse the point there's a pointer on the screen when you move the mouse that pointer also moves in the same direction in which you move the mouse so that was all about a mouse and also i will like to tell you that you know a mouse is connected by a cable to the cpu similarly a keyboard is also connected to the cpu by a cable so th these are used to give input to the cpu the next input device is scanner now what does a scanner do a scanner is an input device that can read the text or an illustration printed on paper translates that information translates that you know uh, that image or the text which you have it has seen on the paper into an information so that uh, you know a com the, the computer can use that information it is basically used for uh, reading the uh, text or the images on the paper and then translating it into a digital form that is the work of a scanner now let us talk about optical character recognition ocr So what does an OCR do it is a device which is used for reading text from paper and translating the images into a form that the computer can understand an OCR is used to convert books magazines and other such printed information into digital form basically you know it is used if you have a hard copy if you have a paper printed or there's something written there's some text in uh, some form of images or something and you want it in the digital form so that it can be used in the computer so ocr is used in that case so it is it is a device which is used for reading the text from the paper and translating it into a form so that a computer can understand So next if we talk about is uh, uh, optical mark recognition OMR uh, now OMR also called as mark sense reader it is a technology where an OMR device senses the presence or absence of a mark such as a pencil mark you if you have given any competitive exam or you know you must have seen somebody given so you know what they do is if there is a subjective type if there is an objective type question paper where there is one question there are four answers so what you have to do is you have to select one particular answer how does the response get submitted in that it is you get a omr sheet on that omr sheet the question number is mentioned with four bubbles and you have to select the bubble with the correct answer so suppose, suppose the answer to question number 1 is second one so you are going to fill the second circle with a pencil mark so that omr sheet is then read into a omr uh, you know reader which then you know uh, identifies that the student uh, you know it, it then fastly calculates that how many answers are correct how many are incorrect based on that omr based on that pencil mark which is done on that omr sheet so it is you know widely used for assessing the objective examinations which involve the multiple choice questions this is the most popular use of optical mark recognition next is a barcode reader a barcode reader is a photoelectric scanner that reads the barcodes the barcodes are the vertical strip black and white marks which are printed on the 
you know you, you can see the barcodes on maybe you can see on books or if you you know ever go to a, a grocery store you must have seen that whenever the billing is done what does the shopkeeper do he just simply picks the item there's a code there's a barcode given on those items he just scans it through the reader and the information of that product gets displayed on his computer that information is like the quantity the uh, all, all the details like the pricing the date of uh, you know the date when it enter his grocery and the basic details related to those products so it is just simply that when they scan that particular barcode all the information related to that products you know get displayed on their computer so it is basically a scanner that reads the barcodes and the barcode reader scans the barcode of the product and checks the description and the latest price of the product so the next input device which we are going to talk about is light pen a light pen is an input device that utilizes a light sensitive detector to select objects on a display screen it is just a uh, it is very similar to a normal pen which we which we use it is just that there is a light sensitive detector on the tip of that pen and whenever you move that pen around the screen it selects that particular objects which you are selecting on the display screen it uses a light sensitive detector to do so right so that was all about the different different input devices we have talked about keyboard we have talked about mouse we have talked about the scanner ocr omr and then the light pen these were the different inputs so, so there are various ways with which we can communicate to the computer with which we can give our input to the computer so that the computer can process that information now if we talk about processing so the processing is done in the cpu as i told you earlier so let us talk about the cpu now so cpu is the brain of your computer any type of instruction given to the computer using any of the input device have to be sent to cpu for execution now any typical cpu has three major components the control unit arithmetic logic unit and the memory registers now we are going to talk about all of these in detail so the control unit the control unit manages the instructions given to the computer it coordinates the activities of all other units in the system by instructing rest of the components of the computer about how to carry out a program's instruction basically the control unit is responsible for coordinating the activities of all the other units all the other devices which are connected to the computer you can say that control unit is just similar to the nervous system of human body as it coordinates the overall coordination of the body parts similarly the control unit coordinates the activities of all other units in the computer so the control unit fetches the instruction from the memory decodes them and directs the various units to perform the specified functions so that was all about the control unit now let us talk about arithmetic logic unit so the alu performs two types of operation the arithmetic and the logical the arithmetic operations are the fundamental mathematical operations consisting of addition subtraction multiplication and shifting operations so the logical operation consists of boolean comparisons such as and or and not now the arithmetic operations such as the addition subtraction multiplying numbers shifting operations these all are the responsibilities of the arithmetic unit of the alu and the logical operations which uh, the logical operations are uh, when you do the boolean comparisons such as and or not xor x not all these are the logical operations so these arithmetic and logical operations are performed by alu so now let us talk about memory registers so you know up now you know you can see that computer takes some input gives the processes the information gives the desired uh, output to the uh, output devices so in all these things you need to store the data somewhere it is not possible to you know just uh, that speed of the input devices is very much uh, you know uh, matching with the processing speed and then the speed of the output devices Uh, so we need some some space to store that data to store the information which we are giving to the computer and the information which the computer is giving to you 
So for those we have the memory. Now computer uses a number of special memory units called registers. So a memory register is a special storage area that holds the data and instructions temporarily during the processing. So uh, now what these registers does is they are they are very fast memory units. The, the processing speed of registers is very high. So they are internally located in the CPU because their processing time is very less. So a memory register is a very special storage area and it holds the instruction which are currently in execution and they are temporarily stored there as you know the, the data which is being processed changes so the data in the registers also changes. So that was all about the computer registers computer memory. Now we will talk about output devices. So the output devices receive information from the CPU and present it to the user in the desired format. So as I have already explained it to you that we get the input devices, uh, we get the input from the input devices, the CPU processes the uh, processing part on the data and then send it to the output devices so that it can be uh, received by the user. Now if we compare it uh, to the input device, the input devices were keyboard, mouse, uh, OCR, OMR, light pen. We are also going to talk about some of the output devices such as monitors, printers, plotters, etc. So if we talk about monitor, so a monitor is just like a television screen. It is used to display data and information. So when some data or instruction is being keyed in, suppose when you are typing on your keyboard, you can also see, see the same keys being typed in the monitor. So when you are processing it, when you are key, uh, typing in the computer, all that data also gets displayed on the monitor of your computer. So the monitor uh, displays the characters or the numbers or the keys which you are pressing. That is the work of the monitor. Now monitors are of several types. Let us talk about the CRT monitor first. CRT stands for cathode ray tube. So the cathode ray tube monitor is relatively very older version of monitors. They were very big, they were very bulkier monitors and they took a lot of desk space as you can see in the image. So these, these are very uh, you know old type of monitors and they were very big as compared to the modern monitors today. Now LCD monitors. So LCD stands for liquid crystal display. These monitors are very light in weight also and they occupy very less space as compared to the CRT monitors. So uh, monitor is one of the output device. Let us talk about the next input device which is a printer. Now suppose you want your output to be uh, in a form of a hard copy, you want it on the, suppose you have, you know, written a letter, you want to print it or you have performed some calculations using spreadsheets and you want to print the uh, outputs, the addition, subtraction, whatever you have performed on paper. So for that purpose, you need a printer. It is a device that produces the output on paper. Such as uh, such an output is also known as the hard copy and it may be in the form of text or graphics. Obviously you can get your text printed, you can get your graphics, your images, everything printed. Now just like monitors are of very different types, printers are also of, uh, there is also a variety of printers. They vary in terms of size, speed and the quality of output. So first we are going to talk about the dot matrix printer. It is a type of printer that uses a print head to print the characters on paper. The print head moves in back and forth or up and down motion on the page. That was about a dot matrix printer. The inkjet printers work by spraying ionized ink on sheet of paper. You can have a look at what an inkjet printer looks like in the image. This is an example of an inkjet printer. The magnetized plates in the ink's path directs the ink onto the paper in the desired shapes. This is a inkjet printer. The next type of printer is laser printer. The laser printer works on the principle of photocopier. The, it, it utilizes a laser beam to produce an image on a drum. You can also have a look of what a laser printer looks like. You can see it in the image. 
So this is a laser printer. It also looks like a photocopy machine, a smaller version of a photocopy machine. It uses the same principle as the photocopy machine. So the next output device is speakers. So you know, uh, as if we compare the computer to the human body, so when you take take input through your ears, do the do the processing, and then you give output through your mouth. So suppose now like like I'm speaking, I'm giving output, right? So similarly, the computers or uh, uses speakers for that purpose. The speakers are used to produce audio output. The computers have sound cards that enable the computers to produce audio output through the speakers. So that was all about the output devices. So now we are going to talk about the memory unit, but after a short break. प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने जीवन ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से युक्त हो मित्रों हम उठे और जागे ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने Ah. Uh -huh. 
Welcome back dear learners. So before going for the break, we were talking about the input devices, CPU and the output devices. Now we are going to talk about the memory unit. So there are two kinds of computer memory, primary and secondary. Primary memory is the memory which is accessed by the processor directly. The operating speed of primary memory is, it should be very fast, it should be as fast as possible so as to cope up with the CPU speed. The processing speed of CPU is very high, that's why we need a special memory which is the you know primary memory so that it's uh, the speed of the primary memory is very high as compared to the secondary memory so that it can cope up with the processing speed of the CPU. So these high speed storage devices are very expensive. So the storage capacity of the main memory is also very limited. Now often it is necessary to store hundreds or millions of bytes of data for the CPU to process. Therefore additional memory is required in all the computer systems. This additional memory is called as the auxiliary memory or the secondary memory. Now if I talk about primary memory, primary memory is of two types RAM and ROM. RAM, random access memory is the type of memory in which it is possible to randomly select and use any location of the memory directly to store and retrieve data. RAM is also known as the read write memory. RAM is volatile in nature. So the data from RAM is lost as soon as the power to the computer is switched off. Suppose you are working, the, there is some data in RAM and when you switch off your computer then there will be no data in the RAM. It will be again filled with data when you start processing with something. So it is volatile in nature. ROM is another type of primary memory from which the data can only be read. You know, you can only read the data from ROM, you cannot write and you cannot modify the data in the ROM once it is written. ROM is non-volatile in nature and there are various types of ROM. First is programmable ROM, programmable read-only memory. Next is erasable programmable read-only memory. It can be erased once written. And the next is electrically erasable. The data in the ROM can be electrically erased. These kind of ROMs are called electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. That was about the RAM and ROM. Now cache memory. So to increase the performance of CPU, a small memory chip is attached between the CPU and the main memory whose access time is very close to the processing speed of the CPU. This memory is called as cache memory. Cache memories are accessed much faster than the conventional RAMs. So now if you talk about the processing speed of memories, it would be in the increase in the decreasing manner of cache memory, the cache memory have the highest processing speed, then the primary memory, the speed of primary memory is slower than the cache memory and then the secondary memory. The secondary memory is the largest in space and the slowest in processing. So it is this way, right? Now secondary memory, uh, in this type of memory, the cost per bit of storage is low as compared to the primary memory, but the operating speed is slow than that of a primary memory. So huge volume of data are stored here on permanent basis and transferred to the primary storage as and when required. For, for permanent basis we need secondary memory. So whenever there is a requirement that data is transferred to the primary memory for execution and uh, vice versa. So the most widely used secondary storage devices are hard disks, CDs, DVDs and pen drives. Now we are going to talk about memory accessing modes. An addressing mode refers to the manner in which a given memory location is accessed. Commonly used memory accessing modes are direct access or the random access mode or the sequential access mode. So let us talk about the random access first. It is the type of the accessing mode in which the values to be stored in a particular memory location is obtained directly. So since the data can be accessed in any order, that is why this type of memory access is also known as a random access of memory. This type of memory access is generally fast and more flexible. Sequential access, it is the type of memory in which the stored data is read in sequence. 
That means if you want to display the fourth record, the reading will start from the first record, then move to second, then to third and finally to the fourth record. This type of memory access can be very time consuming and hence slow. Let us have a look at the diagram of random access and sequential access. So if we talk about the random access first, so it, it, there is no sequence in this. The, in this, the memory locations are accessed randomly. So randomly it can go to fourth, you know, in the starting you can see it is going to fourth and then from fourth it is going to fifth, from fifth it is going to, to the sixth one. So this is very random. There is no pattern, there is no predefined pattern or the sequence it follows. It, it can randomly go anywhere. And in the sequential one, uh, it, it follows a proper sequence. If you have to go to the fifth one, then it has to start from one only. Firstly to one, then to second, then to third, then to fourth, and then to do the fifth. So this is the difference between the sequential access and the random access. So that was about the different accessing modes. Now we are going to talk about the classification of computer. So the computer can be classified according to their shapes and sizes and also according to the technology being used. Broadly, computers can be of three types, analog, digital and hybrid. So the analog computers, these computers work with continuous and physical quantities like temperature, voltage, current, weight, etc. These are not as accurate as digital, digital computers. For example, a blood pressure monitoring machine is a type of an analog computer. Now if we talk about digital computer, these computers work with discrete quantities. The data is converted into binary form that is zeros and ones and these are very much faster than the analog computer and are also more accurate than the analog computer. Digital computer can further be classified as microcomputer, mini computer, mainframe computer and supercomputer. So the microcomputers first. A microcomputer is a computer that contains a microprocessor chip inside it. These are mainly used in offices, homes, schools, shops, etc. So basically the microcomputers are the one which we use in our day to day life. They are the small computers. They are the ones which are very uh, comfortable for the uh, you know office task, school task etc. So these are the microcomputers. The microcomputer can be further categorized as mobile computers, personal computers, desktop PCs etc. Now mini computer. Mini computer provides faster operating speeds and large storage capacity than the microcomputer. These serve as the multi, these, these you know serve as servers. The mini computers are basically the servers which are used in the multi-user environment. Small business organizations which have around 50 to 100 users can use mini computer as their servers. The, these computers are majorly used when you have to you know designate a particular system as the server. So mini computers serve the best purpose for that. So next is the mainframe computer. A mainframe computer or you can simply call them mainframes. They are the second largest in term of capacity and the size of the computer. They are very huge machines and they are very expensive but they can support hundreds of users at a time. It is not a single user system. So these multiprocessor systems have very large storage capacity and also they can handle huge volumes of data and information. They are used in large organizations like railways where centralized data for the entire railway reservation system is maintained. So now we are going to talk about the most powerful computer, those are the supercomputers. So these supercomputers are the most powerful computer in the world. In a supercomputer, many processors work simultaneously, so they have very high processing speed. They can process huge volume of data and information with ultra fast calculations. Supercomputers are used in specialized applications like weather forecast, space research, molecular modeling, etc. So, you know, all these uh, computers are basically used in research, forecast, uh, these kind of things. These are the supercomputers. The computers which we use in our day-to-day -day life are the, uh, they are the 
uh, they are the ones which are small in size they, which are, you know which do not require these high volume processing speed the high volume of data they do not require uh, you know of the capacity which a supercomputer have the so supercomputers are comparatively very expensive also now we are going to talk about hybrid computer these type of computer use both analog and digi digital technology some calculations may take place in analog manner while the other might take place in digital forms these kind of hybrid computers are used in weather forecasting etc so this was all about the types of computer we talked about analog computers we talked about digital computers digital computers are more accurate as compared to the analog computer they worked on the digital computer works on zeros and ones the binary numbers and then they are further you know super they are into micro computers mini computers mainframe computers and the super computers so they are all increasing in size increasing in storage capacity increasing with the processing speed etc so now we are going to talk about the different ports ports are the connecting points on the cpu so the monitor the keyboard printer and other peripheral devices are connected to the computer through ports if you have a computer around you you can just have a look at the cpu and you can see there are multiple ports on the back side so from where the monitor is keyboard uh, monitor, monitor is connected to the cpu the, it is connected via a port a keyboard is connected to the cpu the cable gets inserted at a port and similarly the other devices also so we are going to talk about some of the ports so some uh, majorly used ports are the serial port usb port parallel port and the infrared port what is a serial port a serial port transfers data one bit at a time so you know the transfer here takes place bit wise it is a single wire that transmits eight bits of data so serial ports are also known as com ports or you know you you can just uh, name them as com ports and a mouse is connected to the cpu through a serial port so you you just need to understand that the serial port transfers data one bit at a time this is very important that serial ports transfers data one bit at a time and if we talk about the parallel port a parallel port sends or receives eight bits at a time it it transfers one byte at a time so these eight bits are transmitted in parallel to each other these ports are used to connect devices like printer scanner external hard disk drives etc so the major difference between the serial and the parallel port is that the serial port transfers one bit at a time and the parallel port transmits eight bits at a time so this is the major difference next is the usb port usb stands for universal serial bus it is becoming popular day by day and is used to connect a variety of devices like printers scanners mouse keyboard speakers etc nowadays you can see that you know our cpus they majorly have usb ports only in which we connect the cpu in which we connect the mouse keyboard etc to the cpu it is very simple and easy to use port the next is the infrared port so this port sends and receives a ray of light of infrared frequency from one device to another these type of ports are used for wireless data transmission so this technology is used for tv remotes and in case of computer it is used in devices like wireless keyboards and wireless mouse this was all about the infrared port So learners today we talked about the basic working of a computer then we talked about some of the common input devices such as mouse keyboard light pen ocr omr etc then we tried to understood what is a cpu why cpu is called the brain of the computer because it, it does all the processing and then we talked about the output devices right so uh, you know input devices are used to give input to the computer and output devices are used to give the uh, desired output to the user after the processing 
Uh, so uh, we talked about memory, memory registers. Memory registers are special storage device, special storage places which are directly placed in the CPU only. Then we talked about primary memory, secondary memory. Then uh, the primary memory is volatile in nature. The secondary memory is non-volatile in nature, right? And then after discussing about memory, we talked about the different types of computer. The analog computers, digital computers, analog computers, they, you know, are not very accurate as compared to the digital ones. Then the microcomputers, mini computers, uh, then we talked about the supercomputers and then we talked about the different ports, the uh, serial port, parallel port, USB port and the infrared port. So these all are covered in your lesson, the computer fundamentals. So if you have, you know, any queries, you can just uh, reach, reach to us. And I hope you have understood the, base, the lesson one of your data entry operations basics of computer. For more practice and information, you can uh, regularly watch the eVidya uh, for if second, uh, 12 for senior secondary and 10 for secondary. Uh, and you can also reach to our course material uh, at www.nis.ac.in. Thank you so much. प्रकाशित करने राहो को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना जीवन ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने 